So I'd like to start off my talk, which is why why we should let the youth lead with this uh, concept. No, we always have to remember that great things smart could start with great things happen, beginning with small things, and that goes with age. That goes with how we grow through the years. You know, many times the youth have been disenfranchised. Uh, from setting the course on issues that directly affect them. Parang pinapasantabi lang sila, kasi bata pa sila eh, sabi nila. The young have always been relegated to the sidelines to do the legwork, which is fine. Everything starts there naman. They do all of the coordination and the execution of ideas born from the discussions of those who came before them. The opportunities to approximate their potentials have been actually constantly limited by the lack of experience or either academic qualifications. So madami siyang seemingly obstacles to it. While some in our generation, age namin, I don't know, I think I belong sa, basta I'm already 50 years old, so guess na lang kung generation na Some of us still cling to that um, Jurassic idea that mas may alam kami kesa sa youth because of the age. That only the older ones have the capacity, credibility, and the right to lead. Which for me, major problematic pa yun dyan. Yet, ironically, our generation panders to the young when discussing about the future. This exposes a potential problem. If we are to talk about the elements that the youth want to see in their future, shouldn't they be at the forefront of identifying what works and doesn't work? Diba? What is ideal and not ideal? What is the most pragmatic way of doing things? What should the negotiables and non-negotiables be? At most, what our generation, Kameha, can contribute is to be able to provide context based on our experience through mentoring, which para sa akin comes in a very rare, it's a very rare thing. And this must be done with a lot of humility from us knowing that our context, meaning yours and my generation, is dynamic. Not different, but it's dynamic because we go, we grow through the years. What might have been effective before might not be as effective in our current situation. Kasi nga dynamic, di ba? So before starting the young, sa mga banat na noon kami nga eh, or hindi naman ganyan dati. See, it's very invalidating. Let's all start to take mega doses of intellectual humility and start recognizing that the real experts in terms of their experience are you, the young people themselves. Second, we also need to link the youth to resources and social connections that are otherwise unavailable to them as they are just starting out their careers. Na kahit na nasa school pa kayo, it has to be made readily available. Given the capacity of the youth to absorb the skills, yung knowledge needed to be effective leaders, Couple them with resources, networks, and wisdom coming from a generation that came before them. The, possibility, the possibilities can be super achieved by the youth that's super limitless. Yet, there should also be recognition that there are very few instances how this concept is translated to reality. That's precisely why we need to remind ourselves 
walang age ang pagiging leader. Walang age ang pagiging um, mangarap at walang imposible. Thus, we need to critically examine the role of young people, how they play in our current society. We need to think about how to actually transform our youth from passive spectators in DEDMA to active participants in the process of being able to troubleshoot the multitude of complex societal concerns we face right now. Our generation needs to actively build back the agency that we have deprived from the young for the longest time because of that notion na bata pa kayo eh, hindi niyo pa maintindihan. If you want them to learn how to lead, then it is imperative that we provide them real opportunities to lead, real experiences, on the ground experiences, and masasabi ko pa, lived experiences. Despite the perceived inexperience, they too should have seats in the decision making table enough to substantially influence the outcomes of the discussion. Dapat may involvement na from the start. Just plain assurance of representation, tokenism, and taking the up and having the opportunity to be heard just won't do it. The youth should not just be treated as another sector being accommodated or a plain afterthought. The act of mobilizing communities and leading change is not a theoretical exercise where we teach the concepts and expect students to gain knowledge afterwards. It's something that we teach and we encourage for them to act. Remember, leadership is learned by implementing the task. And a huge part of it is being accorded the same level of accountability. Let me show you a good example. In the Philippines, there are reforms done in the Sangguniang Kabataan, where young people, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, they're given actual government positions to address the needs of their community. This is also coupled with fiscal autonomy, meaning they can allot budget uh, and actually build on initiatives, on projects with corresponding accountabilities. So in other words, they're allowed to lead a community, mag-plan, mag-budget, lahat. While we need more reforms in terms of capacity building of these uh, SKs and in pushing for greater professionalization, of young government officials. These initiatives actually provide a huge and solid platform for young people to learn the ropes of community leadership, of being able to relate to those who need help and to be able to problem solve. Kung ano ba, ano ba ang dapat na improve sa isang komunidad na ito? So what I am trying to emphasize is that the youth should be central to any processes that shape the now and the future. SKs can actually be a start. The youth might need to go beyond the spaces they are given and assert their spaces where they are traditionally disenfranchised, where they are traditionally uh, taken off because masyado pang bata. A concrete example also in terms of local governance would be for the youth to dare run for local government positions and not just be limited to running for SK positions. In my opinion, we can even try to be more liberal and start challenging the age requirements for certain government positions. You know, the young need to be irreverent to the stereotypes that reinforce the idea that the young are less capable. Much is still done, uh, much has yet to be done 
to expand platforms, that cost, but it's interesting to know how young people themselves are starting to assert their spaces. One is through the famous social media. It's readily available, but we have to be accountable with its use. As young people are more adept to the online environment, which will be already how we will start living our lives. It is but natural for the youth to take up leadership in the digital space. From producing content, facilitating discourse, and managing knowledge, young people are poised to lead the way towards our digital future. There is also a lot of promise with young people tipping the momentum from the status quo yung parang lagi na lang gajan, to the most impactful social environments. Example is Greta Thunberg, di ba? She built actually a huge legacy in terms of climate change. And with that, she demanded change from world leaders for climate justice. Isa pa is, is Joshua Wong, founder of Demosisto. And he's one of those in the forefront of the democracy movement in Hong Kong. Sino pa? Si Malala Yousafzai. He's the youngest Nobel laureate who got shot by a Pakistan Taliban and became the leading voice for education of young girls. Locally, Madami promise. Some young leaders are also showing a strong um, promise in terms of local governance. And wag na tayo lumayo, si Vico Soto yun. And he successfully implemented programs directed towards the needs of their community and actually busted corruption in Pasig. And we also have Tobit Cruz, who is serving as a barangay kagawad in Taytay Rizal, who spearheaded the community cleaning of Manining Creek, which is now considered as the water rehabilitation model for Southeast Asia. And we also have countless SKs, officials who have risked their own health to distribute ayuda, na sila na mismo ang nag and to facilitate community-based triage mechanisms and augment the basic services in their community. So madami pa siya, and madami pa yan, but just to cite examples and real-life experiences. You know, these are just some of the wonderful things that young people contributed to our society. However, as we empower you, the youth, the young must also learn the value of humility as you are given greater responsibilities. Sometimes you just might need to be reminded that taking a step back and taking time to reassess your situations and your choices might be necessary. At times, we even might need to seek actively the voices of those who came before us, especially during times when we feel lost, demotivated, and unsure. The pressure and expectations demanded by the situation may seem to be an uphill battle. But let's all remember to always be kind to ourselves. You know, failures are part of your journey. Failures may come along the way and will definitely come your way. But know that these are stimulus for learning. Failures are actually steps towards success. Walang shortcut sa success. Face yourself in a way that you don't rush yourself towards perfection. After all, wala rin naman perfect sa mundo. The irony of the human condition is that we're so focused, we're so keen on reaching some goal, some happiness, that we sometimes forget about the journey itself. The obstacles that we overcome, and that in itself is where life happens. Huwag niyong kakalimutan in the middle of you being lost. Look back and tell yourself, ganito na pala ako. 
kalayo, ganito na pala, malayo na pala ang narating din. But fill yourself with deep inspiration as you move forward. Doon kayo huhugot ng lakas. There is a lot of promise for young people, but it demands that we too, the older generations, must work to open up spaces, shatter class ceilings or glass ceilings for the youth, and provide guidance called from their deep experience of the world. To those coming from my generation, let me just remind you of this. The youth are not the leaders of tomorrow. They are the leaders of the now. As soon as our generation realizes that this and let go of our sentimental musings of being in positions of power, probably the faster we get to create the world that is fit for our future. Thank you very much and good afternoon.